So here I'm going to do a quick demo of uh, how Fracture workflow works by simply creating a cube here and we'll pretend that this cube is part of the, uh, um, the roof that we want to break. So it's something like this above from the ground and it's thin like this. There are different ways to approach the problem of what part of the geometry here we want to break. Let me just first show you a very simple um, workflow here. So in Fracture, um, the very first thing you do is you tell the software that you want to break this particular geometry here. So for that, you have this base selection, break selected, and now you have um, this object basically broken into pieces. The next thing you need is a simulator because this is a simu uh, bullet based simulation um, that's going to work the whole um, breaking and the falling of the debris uh, in this case. So I'm going to create a simulator which is, if you go to the outline here, you see that there is a World 1 simulation cre uh, simulator created. So I'm going to select this geometry and the World 1 and then connect the um, two together which I can see here inside of the FX World simulation user interface. So what you see here is uh, the cube here that uh, we created and then you see the, the break geo node which is what is responsible for uh, the, the breaking here. And in break geo node you see that the fragments are Veronoi fragments and you can change this if you if you wish to which I did in, uh, in the uh, project that we have because the geometry that we are breaking there is uh, wood. So it wouldn't break like this. It would break more like splinters. So I created the uh, the splinters there. And again, you have uh, different controls here as to how detailed splinters do you want to create here. So let's do seven. And if I rewind, you can see that it has much more details here. Okay, so we'll start here with, at this level. And we want to break this. And, and Fracture is um, at its most powerful behavior when you work with events and uh, modifiers. So I'm going to delete this and start from the scratch. If you really are into Fracture, I, I suggest that you watch the uh, videos that are created at their website, which I'm going to put in my description. Very detailed demo and production workflow of different kinds of uh, features available inside of Fracture. Uh, very valuable and very useful videos, I would say. Okay, so here what I'm going to do is add an event. Um, so, uh, sorry. So let's go here, add an event. And I want to create a um, an animated event called Bomb. Bomb is basically what is uh, responsible for breaking the geometry in this case. We are not going to go uh, with the object filter here, so I'm, I'm going to delete that because um, the, the geometry is already broken uh, by the break geo node. All we need is the simulation. It, this node is, or this event is going to connect the breaking of the geometry to the uh, simulation. I'm going to leave everything else here unchanged and I'm going to get this uh, push modifier which is a uh, built-in modifier of a bomb because bomb explodes, right? So this push modifier actually pushes the pieces out which sometimes you may need to do that but in this case we don't need to do that so I'll delete that. I'm going to create another event. It's going to be animated event and I would call this activate in volume. By the way, when when you're working with uh, Fracture, at least as of now, you cannot have um, Viewport 2 turned on because you will not be able to see some of the things. Like here, you see this volume that just got created. Um, if you go to Viewport 2, it's invisible. So make sure that you are in legacy uh, default uh, Viewport. All right, so in this volume activation, what we are basically telling Fracture is that this volume is what will be responsible for breaking. So when this volume is intersecting parts of the geometry, that's the part of the geometry that I want broken. So let me uh, resize this a little bit. Well, actually, um, let's animate the size also. So let's say that you are going to have a 500 frame shot and nothing is going to, um, by the way, let me make sure that this 
geometry that is connected here is not active right now it's active we don't want it active we only want portion of the geometry activated when the um, when this volume is intersecting with the geometry so right now if I uh, hit the play button you will see that let me just make sure that what I want to demonstrate is yeah this is the default setting so that's what I wanted to show you so if I play the video you see that it's cracking and everything is going down and let's just uh, do the play every frame here so that the simulation works properly it's broken into pieces and and that's really not what we want to do here we want the control over the parts of the um, the roof in this case that we want to break so if I uncheck this active now you will see that the um, the geometry is not going anywhere it's just uh, frozen in space and that's exactly how I want I'm going to go into show and turn off polygon for a minute because what you see here is the um, the drawing of the um, uh, of the geometry which comes from this global control so it says draw geometry and if you go to event and if you go to bomb you see that this is the color of geometry will um, show up if all these uh, events have uh, filtered through so if you see this color that basically means that everything is working properly so so let's just go with that let's not look at our original geometry which will be rendered in the final shot anyway all right so um, what I want to do is use this volume to break this roof and for that I'm going to go to the volume here at frame let's say 60 this volume is going to be where it is so let me move this uh, oh, on the side uh, another monitor I'll bring it back when when we need to so I'm going to hit s that way everything is um, uh, set at keyframe here for the volume and then in seven at seventieth frame this volume is going to go up and it's going to expand this way so this anything that's inside this volume when this volume comes up like this is going to be broken so you can already see that um, fracture is already acting up upon on that and if you look at here um, this middle piece that just got broken this was the bomb event which was breaking every part of this um, uh, roof but then if you go to animation here that says activate in volume you see that the color that returns is this uh, white or um, very light color and that's what you see here so it's working so basically if you go and uh, rewind all the way and now if you play at the normal speed you see that the anything that was inside the volume is broken now now there are a couple of ways to set that up here you see um, the center of the fragment is inside the cube then it's broken you can also change it to point so any point of that uh, geometry that's inside the um, uh, the volume uh, will be broken so now you will see a different type of breaking here because even though the piece is here there is a point of that piece that was inside of this um, uh, cube and therefore that got broken also I'm going to leave it to center for what we are trying to do here okay so so far so good now the only problem is that in our case we would like the uh, force to come from inside out so the way it is breaking right now you see that it's falling inside uh, it does not have any force coming from the uh, inside of the garage in our case now couple of ways again in fracture to do this but I'm going to use the one that I found to be most useful is by adding a modify here called assign and I will choose it to be a um, velocity and I will give this velocity um, let's start with uh, 40 in y direction right because force is gonna go up and let's try and play this out and see how it looks so imagine that this is the roof that you're looking at now it's broken and now you see that 
a little bit of pieces that came out. So a couple of ways again to modify this. If you change this to 100, you're going to see um, a uh, stronger force pushing the, um, the debris out, right? The other way you could have done also um, is uh, if you go to global here and you have a 98.1 negative uh, as your um, uh, gravity. So if I do a 9.8, um, 9.8, um, now you will see that the pieces are going to be flying um, very high because the gravity is not strong enough to pull them down. So in that case, I would um, go to my velocity and bring it down quite a bit and say 10, for example. And now if you play, you see, well, maybe 10 is too small. Let's do 25. It's quite a slow motion type effect. So you can create those things here also very easily. Um, if you want to be uh, I realistic uh, in terms of the physics, then I think the uh, suggested value here is um, negative 981 because of the scaling that works out in, um, uh, in Maya, which is in uh, centimeters. So um, I'm going to leave it at negative 98 point one and uh, change my velocity here to let's say 85 and then try to run the simulation again and see what happens yeah so so that's one part of um, fracture um, the other thing that's also cool about fracture there's so many different things though but one is for this material or the object that we have created you can also have the friction set um, to different levels. So right now, for example, if I play, after the pieces fall on the ground, you will see that they are sliding and just, you know, keep going for a while. So if I want that those pieces to stick to the ground uh, faster, then I will increase this to, let's say, 0 0.9, um, the friction value, and when it falls now, you will see that they will not go anywhere. They just fell exactly where you know they fell and they stayed there. Um, the other thing is uh, obviously the mass here that you can change and this mass again would have a uh, much more valuable input if you have two objects colliding. I think then you will see how mass is creating the force. Um, that the, the object with the bigger uh, value in mass is knocking the other objects with the smaller values down basically. One last thing I'll show you about fracture while we are at it. Um, let me just uh, reduce the size of my simulation to something like um, 100 frames because I don't think that we have, well, maybe uh, not quite 100, maybe 200 frames. And it's this takes. Um, once you have a very complex simulation, your um, simulation run is going to run very slowly. So rather than doing the live simulation, you can actually add a take. And um, let's just call this take one. Um, and I'm going to bake it to disk. You can also bake it to keys, which I'll show you in the final work because I did do bake to keys and then um, did the baking of the whole animation. But here, let's do uh, bake to disk. And what it does right now is um, it's creating the um, uh, the cache file basically that will be placed inside of the um, uh, of this folder here and once it's done you have a choice to either run the live simulation which you wouldn't do it at that point because the whole idea of doing this take is to uh, not do the live simulation and once you have this take selected here you can actually scrub and go through the actual animation here and stop at any point you want to. So it's a very powerful workflow that way that um, when you have complex simulation of many objects uh, that we will see that we will have in our final shot, 
uh, it becomes a nightmare to uh, go through the live simulation every time when you are tweaking something. Um, so it's always a good idea to do the take and then uh, run the take um, and go through it slowly in your uh, final work. All right, um, please go to um, Fracture FX's website if you are interested in learning more about Fracture. Uh, I'm going to use Fracture for most of the um, debris uh, creation and the uh, geometry breaking part of this shot. And then we'll look at other modules of simulation for smoke and fire and uh, dust particles. Okay, thanks a lot.